Bathroom break. I have to go to the bathroom. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like right when I hit uh, uh, uh. Okay, now that I'm moaning and done moaning and groaning. This is episode <laughs> 13, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Unlucky 13. Unlucky 13, and we're not going to do anything themed on the unlucky. Because that's stupid. You know, like, I saw Joe Rogan do podcast 1000, and everyone was hoping it would be something, like, crazy, or, like, have, like, Kanye West on there or something. And in the end, it was just his friend. It was uh, just Joey Diaz, and they just got really high, and then just did a podcast together. It was a good podcast, but it was, like... Not what people wanted. Yeah. And then when, I think when Super Mega did 100, they were, uh, they did, they didn't do anything really special, but at the end, they did the fucking dad rap. The oh fucking my dad and yeah that was like fuck that was hilarious. special <laughs> yeah that was special yeah it was super random and then that's just how the podcast ends <clears throat> yeah that was great i don't know if actually i don't know if that's how it ends but it's in there yeah you know so i went back and i started playing uh demon souls again yesterday oh really Cause, yeah because uh we talked about it being my favorite game mm-hmm. and then um i had to go back and play it mm-hmm. so i started playing it yesterday and i got so mad i turned it off completely oh my and god <laughs> i got so pissed off because my game is starting to do so the only bad thing about demon souls being in 2020 and it's a fucking like 12 year old game <laughs> is that uh there's glitches that are starting to happen to me uh-huh. that i never noticed before like now my character will randomly switch all her weapons out so what like if you have a two-handed if you're two-handing a sword Uh it'll make it one-handed it'll switch your left hand to have a shield your right hand to have a bow if you had like a secondary Uh and then you have a shield and a bow equipped and then it'll unequip the shield and then like it'll like move it around for you that's been happening a bunch. What? And I thought it would change by changing my controller, and it didn't. I was about to say, maybe it's your controller, but mm-hmm. apparently not. No. Huh. Stupid. And so I was fighting the red-eyed knight in the Boletarian Palace, uh-huh. and he fucking just, like, fucking was running at me with a pike, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to dodge his shit. And then I uh, switched all my weapons, and I died. And I was like, okay. So I turned off the PS4 or the PS3 before it registers the death. I do it again. And then the second time it happened again, but I switched my weapon back before you can kill me. Uh-huh. And then I forget that Demon Souls is so brutal where the enemy's tracking is busted. Oh, I know. It's like homing. It, it's like homing. So when he did the spear, he like, even if you roll, it's he still like yeah. goes into your shit. So I forgot about that completely. And I was like, oh this is why i get frustrated okay yeah i'm gonna turn this off and i i just had to meditate afterwards because i was so i was so frustrated fuck that game i'm so pissed off never playing it again it yeah sucks. it's not gonna happen but it's fucking amazing <laughs> I, w- I beat phalanx though but i got really pissed off about because i went back to like farm mm-hmm. and uh i'm making i, I made a character so i tried to do something different mm-hmm. um with dark souls 3 i made my D character <clears throat> Sarah. Um, mm-hmm. so he's like a just pyromancy, but like he's only using flame based everything. Um, so pyromancy or flame weapons or fucking flame, um, items and uh-huh. stuff. Uh, but, <clears throat> um, for demon souls, I made a Dazra one, which is like another character in D and D that mm-hmm. we have in the party who's an assassin Mm -hmm. and she's like really big on backstabs so all of the playthrough is only backstabs on humanoid characters oh my god dude it's so it's so interesting and it's really really funny but you do everything like at a third of the of the speed yeah i can imagine because you're having a fucking strafe and circle yeah, around people and roll and yeah then like lock on meanwhile dodging everyone else who's attacking you just to get backstabs it's really frustrating okay, you know what i mean there's not really that many humanoid enemies there's a lot towards, of monsters yeah. once you get to a certain point it's a bunch of monsters and yeah. a lot of them you can't even backstab yeah exactly it so just into... but like boltarian palace is like all people yeah, it's so it's like backstabs on everything uh-huh. yeah so it's cool though it's fun to do like i was doing it on like 
uh on the staircase and i'm like trying to do a backstab <laughs> and then like you know kicking them off the uh-huh. stairs <gasps> did you know that in the poison level any enemy that you kick off the 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 first area before uh-huh. you get to the the dirty colossus or whatever uh-huh. before you get to that boss you know how there's like item drops in that boss it was like healing items and poison stuff. Mm-hmm. The more enemies that you throw off the the ledges to their to their death in the first area, the more items there will be in the boss fight. Oh. Yeah. How fucking random is that? I don't know about. Maybe oh. they're just making everything spawn because you can't really get it or May- yeah, maybe because you couldn't get it. That might be why. That makes sense. It's uh-huh. like the I- all the items that you could have got from them, but it's ensured that if you knock one down, there will be an item in the boss fight. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that at all. Yeah, and it's completely based on just kicking the the enemies down there. Huh? Yeah, so you could like purposely ragdoll any of them to the edge, and then get more items at that boss. It's fucking cool. Huh? Mm-hmm. Weird. Yeah, super random. That game is super underrated. There is straight up something different all the time in that game. Yeah. Brandon was saying that back, you know, several years ago. He said that he went to the Boltarian Palace and there was a fucking Grim Reaper in it, and he was like, "I," he's like, "I've never seen it again, dude." But there was a Grim Reaper when you go to the left and you mm-hmm. go down the steps to the door that only opens with pure white tendency yeah. to fight uh, Meralda. Uh-huh. You'll go there and actually, I think the mic is kind of far. there. We go. Would you'll go there and. <clears throat> He said there was a Grim Reaper in that area. He was like, I was so thrown off, dude. Super random. He's like, then I had to fight it. And I fought it at like a really low level. And uh, he's like, I've never seen that again. And he's like, there's stuff with the dragons that happen all the time that like I never notice. And then that's like never the same rather. Mm -hmm. And that happened to me a lot. So like I'll do like a new playthrough. And in the Boletarian Palace, like the dragon's not even there. Yeah, the dragons seem like they're kind of randomized in a way like i don't get that either and you can run up there and get the shield the purple flame shield and all Uh that and then you can come back like the next level like the next time you do the run for farming and then he's back Uh it's kind of weird i love it but it might happen because you go to the new area like that second area Uh and he's over there by the by the castle then you come back oh and he's like gone Uh yeah it could be but that's awesome that the game had like that function we didn't Uh really talk about the functions of demon souls that makes that awesome but that was like an amazing part about that game i thought uh-huh. it was fucking sweet that's a uh, like super unique yeah, i don't see any other games that are trying doing like random stuff uh, uh-huh. dark souls 3 always had like some kind of weird um like I'll, I'll 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 fight bosses who do weapon attacks i've never seen before uh-huh. they'll surprise me but Demon Souls sometimes has like a completely different functions that mm-hmm. I've just never seen, and I've beaten that game a bunch. Yeah, it was like all new. Like, what the fuck? I never seen that before. And then all of a sudden, there's like some fucking oh, random shit. Thing yeah, that just like pops up, or you know, I learned something new. Like the, the where the sword is put in to go back to the Nexus. Uh-huh. The it's not a. It's you thought it was a rock, probably. Yeah, it's a it's a skull of an ant eater. Oh, yeah. How random is that? Weird. But, oh, I always thought it was just like a rock or two. Yeah, I thought it was a rock uh-huh. for sure. It's an ant eater head, which is a jap. Well, it serves as Japanese lore for it's like the devourer of like nightmares. So you can have good dreams, and you're supposed to pray to it to have better dreams. But if you like pray to it too much, it gets hungry and he starts eating like your humanity or something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, kind of random. So subtle because like the features on the, on the like rock uh-huh. are like very subtle. They're not like um, no fucking. <laughs> it's not like defined. <laughs> no spawn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not like it doesn't have like it's not three D like cut. Uh-huh. I think it's just like a little like PNG like paste it on there. Oh, that makes <clears> sense <throat> then. Yeah. yeah, I always thought it was like a gray rock. I always wish that you could get the sword that's in that in, uh-huh. in the skull of the anteater. I wish you could always get that sword because it's so pretty. The last little bonfire, you pull it out, and it's like that a been super so weapon for the final boss. Yeah, that would have been badass. Well, they give you Soul Brant uh-huh. and Demon Brant from the Old King, and then the you get one from the Old King, uh-huh. and then you get one from the False King, I think. 
or you get one from beating the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get one from the old king, which is Soul Brand, and then you get Demon Brand from beating the final boss. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. I mean, you get those, and then you're supposed to use them together, and you, like you craft them to be like the max amount, and then you take it to new game. And then you take it to the the blacksmith, and he'll forge it to be like the most powerful, not the most powerful weapon. It's not like the blue blood sword, but you get some other like combined version of that uh -huh. sword. I don't know what it is. It has some cool name, something Brant. Yeah, sure. It's like a soul demon Brant, just the merger of the names. I yeah. don't know what it is, but something like that. And I've never done the blue blood sword, the lucky sword, because uh -huh. I'd never wanted to do that playthrough. We just had to max out lucky. It's not worth it. No. Just and then you got to farm for the items in that one fucking cave level. Oh yeah, the thing that. you did for platinum. Yeah, you have to do that to get the fucking blue blood sword. Uh -huh. And it's like the longest sword, second most powerful in the game. Yeah, not really worth it if you can just get the butcher's knife and then just fucking. Or you can do the dragon boat smasher. Yeah, I never get to use that sword, but I kind of want to. I probably won't do it this playthrough though, because I'm doing the backstab run. Yeah. So. But the Dragonbone Smasher is amazing, fucking super satisfying because you just crush an enemy. Yeah, and they just fucking fall flat. Like once you hit them, they're like, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the butcher's the butcher's knife is like that too, though. But it has like blood all over that. it. It's I think it's a lighter version oh. of the of the Bone Smasher. I might hit harder too because you have to craft it. I think you do it out of a. I think you do it out of a curved sword, if I'm not mistaken. And then you have to get that to max. And then you like, hmm, maybe, or it's a two-handed sword. I can't remember. But you the you the max I out think a it's weapon. A two-handed sword. And then you you get the what's it? The adjunctor's soul. Uh -huh. And then you use that soul to make the butcher's knife. It's so fucking hard though. That's like the best weapon to use against uh, the dude. Oh, what's his name? The Silver Knight in the in the boss fight with oh, the uh, the lady uh, Maiden no, Astraya. Yeah, you, with Maiden Astraya, there's like a there's the the Silver Knight dude. Uh -huh. Oh man, he's so I badass looking. Of, yeah, it's like my favorite armor, second favorite armor in the game. Yurt's armor is awesome too. It's like the isn't it fluted knight or something? Mm -hmm. His is the his is like the silver something armor. It reflects magic. Uh -huh. Or it's like resistant to magic, so you're supposed to use it in the fucking uh, Shrine of Storms level, because it's like all favorite magic level? level. Yeah, that level sucks. That's my least favorite level. I fucking love that area so much. It's so fucking stupid. I hate those skeletons. <laughs> and then the Grim Reaper dudes are the fucking worst with laser beams. Uh huh. And then like they hit you, you fucking you take like max damage. You really should not do that level without the without warding. Like that war that fucking level will fuck you up without warding. I love that level though. Like it's the manta the race. Like it's so pretty. It's better than fucking Tower of Latria. I was gonna say I kinda like Tower of Latria more. <laughs> <laughs> True just died. That that level's great. It no! feels so good. Fuck those little Cthulhu robe wearing awesome. that lantern whole level is so cool. bitches. You go through the prison and you just <laughs> and there's like dudes like dying and like screaming in the prison. You gotta save them. That and that's how you get like extra characters and you can like the bosses are all cool. The lady who like uh, fucking the the witch lady and uh -huh. she like multiplies and then you have to like find her and then she puts rune traps on the ground that's awesome that's so cool i mean it's a cool level but the enemies in it suck, suck dick yeah, yeah i mean the cthulhu guys are fucking terrible but they're like ding, 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 ding. they're so fun to fight they're better than the ones in dark souls 3 yeah those where they are like bad. eat your health and those then they fucking, fucking ladies brand yeah. you. they're the worst but they are heavily inspired by the tower of latria yeah without that. a doubt i mean they're like almost identical i fucking love the tower of latria it's a fun level Makes me nervous because I don't want to fall down those holes. And then, uh, I really like that level. Every level is good, though. The poison level is really laggy, and that's its uh -huh. only issue. It's just like the Blight, um, Blight Town. Blight Town, yeah. It's just as laggy, if not worse. Probably worse. Probably. Cause <laughs> well, that I don't know. Blight Town was really chuggy. Bad. You yeah. could run down. There's a, there's a modder who does, um, who does it in reverse. So he makes it so you can't go top to bottom. You have to go bottom to top and then mm -hmm. go out 
the sewers. It's cool. Okay. Yeah. Which is really easy to do. You just have to, like, have, like, one thing changed. Because, uh-huh. like, I remember when I first, the very first time I played Dark Souls, I went through Anor Orlando or uh, New Londo. I went uh-huh. down. And then I went through, I came behind the 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 fat dudes in that hallway. And I ran past them all, got, like, the red armor. Uh-huh. Uh, I went all the way up. And then I got... I was like, what the fuck? I can't go any further. Because the door was locked. That's what it is. Yeah. The door is locked. And I was like, what the fuck? I went the wrong way. And so I had to go backwards. Uh-huh. And then uh, I remember my friends were like, how the fuck do you already have that stuff? And I was like, I went backwards. Did you know you can go backwards? And then um, I guess I could have fought the spider then. But then I didn't. Quilag. And yeah. then I, you had to go backwards all the way through the sewers. Which doesn't really make sense. Like, I guess you don't have to, right? I don't know if you don't have to. I've never tried it. I never tried skipping the sewers altogether, I don't think. I think I just went back and fought the sewers. The the demon down there. Yeah, the big gaping, dragon. Gaping dragon. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> 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 <sighs> 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 Yeah, it's the best. It's really, it's really sad that most more people haven't played Demon Souls. It really makes me really sad. Yeah, because that... the series only got popular with Dark Souls. I mean, mm-hmm. Demon Souls was like super overlooked. Yeah, and the fucked up thing is that it, people bitched about how hard Dark Souls was, and I was like, if you haven't played Demon Souls, you can't talk. Oh, mm-hmm. well, you can talk. You can say it's hard, but like, yeah, Demon Souls got harder when you died. Yeah. Which you're gonna die on your first playthrough. And you're like, oh, fuck. Like, and it's not something that's, like, told. It's no, they like, don't even tell you. No, they just about the do it. Yeah, they don't like, tell you anything yeah. about that. The tendencies uh-huh. and, like, where the like where the um, certain things take place. Yeah. There's a um, Mephistopheles' quest, you uh-huh. know, like, killing these guys. That must have been a bitch for people to figure out without a guide. And I don't think it had a guide at all. No. I know the collector's edition had like some kind of little book, but I don't know what was in the book because I don't have it. But probably I doubt there was a guide on until like no. probably months later before people were like, Ooh, sure. "Oh, the Mephistopheles quest is done like this and blah blah blah." Because uh-huh. that that game is like pretty fucking big, and then there's like different nodes to go to like different worlds, different stuff. worlds. Yeah, yeah, and those worlds are big in themselves, and some of those. No, I guess, unless it was Mephistopheles' quest, all the quests were within that world. Mephistopheles, I think, was the only one that, like, bounced around. Interchanged. Huh. Yeah, because he wanted you to kill people. And then... Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then Yorms was... Or Yorms... Uh, Yurts was, like, different because you had to go into... You were using... He, like, took the Nexus from you. Yeah. And so he went into the Nexus and was like, oh, I'm going to kill some dudes. If, and then he, like, starts killing everybody. Yeah, which was insane, too. Yeah, it's so fucking badass. And then when I played Dark Souls 3 and that one dude's there with his hat at the top with the... With the oh, yeah. I thought uh-huh. that was going to be, like, a yurt situation. Uh-huh. And I was like, is this guy going to start fucking killing people because he <laughs> gave me a red eye orb? Uh-uh. And then in Dark Souls 1, they stole that same thing where that one guy... Uh, oh, will kill the... Will kill... Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the gold dude. Yeah. He kind of is like Yurt too, but he's gold. And yeah. he kills the uh the firekeeper. Cut, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so badass. So you uh-huh. got to get revenge and take her back and then she can talk. Uh-huh. So badass. That's yeah, really cool. It's too bad too. 2 is like completely overlooked too. Like Dark Souls 2 is like they um I was looking at a uh, I was looking at soundtrack uh-huh. for Dark Souls 1, 3 and Demon Souls. Really strong soundtracks. 2 has almost no soundtrack at all. Yeah, like it's weird. I don't oh, even no. there's like nothing on YouTube for it. Like look up like Dark Souls 2 soundtrack. There's like nothing on there. There's like a few people posted boss music, uh-huh. but that's it. There's no like playlist for Dark Souls 2's music. Huh. I wonder if there's like some copyright spiel or something with I don't it. No. I want to like play it again just so I can hear the fucking music just because I'm like so curious about Bye, what's left out. And it's me. Oh, come now, bitch. 
Buy something. I'm gonna shake my ass, bitch. I'm shaking my ass, bitch. Buy something. Buy something. Buy something. Buy 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 something something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come now. Help a poor old woman and buy something. <laughs> <laughs> She's a good oh, character. Die rotten low. There's there's a lot of memorable stuff about that game, but it's really just the players than it was anything else. Yeah, I, I like it beef. though, like the whole like scorpion boss dude and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, he kind of like that that lady kind of rotated like on a pivot though. Uh -huh. She didn't look right. She looked like she was kind of stuck like T posey. <laughs> yeah, and she was like. Rrr, rrr, rrr. And the the carriage and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, yeah, that was a cool boss. It was uh -huh. memorable. Actually, it wasn't that was one of the ones in the trailer. Uh -huh. People were like, "What the fuck, a carriage? That's cool." Uh, kind of a stupid boss though. Yeah, gimmicky you and easy cross out kill. big ass bridge and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if anything, it was getting to the boss that was way harder than the boss. Yeah, because you gotta go like on that cliff side and then to that bridge and then you're finally at there the castle which is pretty much just for that boss battle it's only for the boss battle and like um a covenant that's up there uh -huh. it's like a little tiny dude who's like <laughs> oh yeah i remember him. He, he has like something on his head a uh -huh. little weird looking dude um yeah that was a there's a lot of forgettable stuff unfortunately that sucks i mean there was stuff i liked i think it mostly it's it the biggest problem that i think why it's overlooked is because there's no like essential lore in that game it's just cool uh -huh. it's just like they forgot about the lore and focused on the game which still kind of wasn't great anyways so. yeah it was kind of easy compared to like compared to the other ones that's the why they made three. smaller the first sin because they yeah. had to make it harder it's just lame. which did make it <laughs> way harder <laughs> yeah it's a different fucking game and now when you go back and you play you can't play dark souls 2 without playing fucking scholar of the first sin yeah you gotta play that one uh -huh. and it's way harder and i remember playing scholar and i was like getting my ass whooped like early on like everything was different yeah it's like ninja gaiden 3 when that came out super fucking easy and everybody hated it but then they're like, oh, okay. And they released... <laughs> Sigma? Uh, what is that called? I think it was Razor's Edge. Oh, okay. NG Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge or something. And it's a tougher version? Oh, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, they changed every fucking thing about that game. And really? it's so difficult now. It's just like Ninja Gaiden 2 Sigma, where that was insane too. Yeah, I played a little bit of that. It's so fucking annoying i didn't play but i loved it so I, much i like they look good it looks like a better version of like devil may cry yeah because they added like new characters to play as and can you like you can play more people than just a ninja right yeah you can play uh fuck i forgot their names Raiden, that's his name right something like that Raiden? uh ryu ryu hayabusa oh yeah 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 and then the fucking ayane She's like the purple hair yeah, ninja yeah. girl. And the then, chick from like de dead whatever. Yeah, she's in uh, Dead or Alive. Yeah, yeah. They all are. And then They're uh, all like just fucking super hot, assuming. giant boobs, crazy <laughs> physics. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize they released the Dead or Alive 6. A new one. <laughs> Me either because I don't play fighting games. Yeah, because I beat your fucking booty hole in. Yeah, because you could fucking throw somebody from one area to another and it kills your ego. Yeah. Oh, besides that. <laughs> <laughs> it fucking hurts my feelings. <laughs> Sucks. The game's cool, though. And then there's bouncy boobs in it. It's pretty uh -huh. nice. Soul Calibur's like that, too, though. Yeah. Gotta love me some. Uh, Soul Calibur's Tika. really fun, though. What's, is that her name? Tika? Uh. Tifa. No, that's no. Final Fantasy VII. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, man, dude. Uh, Taki. Taki. <laughs> Taki, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taki. Dude, Tifa would fit right in, though, for yeah. sure. But uh, Taki had, like, she has, like, a way too loose. And she of got a nipples, outfit. too, that stick out. Yeah, too. she's, like, like, this is barely, too rated. Yeah, it's barely should be rated T. That really, it's, like, like it's, it's like prominent a, nipples. Like, for you can sure. see that bitch. In the in the newest one, 
Uh-huh. It's like they're about to fucking pierce out like fucking tax. And that's just like Ivy too. Like she's got like oh I know one piece of fabric over her nip. Yeah, it's, it's just like, like barely oh, there. But like you know if you it. if you shook once it's it's coming out. Uh-huh. Like when you look at a uh, Jill in Resident Evil uh, Three. Uh-huh. Oh man, my wife was watching me play that, and my wife is so critical on like female uh, attire in video games. And like I'm playing Resident Evil Three, the new one, uh-huh. <laughs> and she's all sweaty, and she just like did like all this crazy shit towards the end of the game. My wife was like, "Man, she is so sweaty in that cutscene, dude. That tube top would have fallen down forever ago. She's like, it would have gotten so loose from moving around. Those titties would be jiggling out of there for sure." And I was like, "Oh, you know what?" Yeah, they really would. She was like, "Yeah, this game is not realistic. At least <laughs> oh like God. if." If you're gonna give her a tube top, at least let it like sag a little and like you know. And I was like, yeah, I guess eventually that tube top should either be changed out of or be way more realistically looser, you know, for the the realist. She's like, oop, I gotta put on my sweatshirt. Yeah, that'd be my funny. titties about to. Pop yeah, out. yeah, yeah, or something, or like she puts on like a you know like in Resident Evil Four when Leon gets the vest uh-huh. and like the arm plates and stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, something like that. That makes it. Oh, she doesn't go to the police station. But, but she gets like the the arm things and stuff like right at the beginning of the game does from she? that cop zombie right when you get the gun right in the beginning does she yeah she's like completely done and then you can hear her like snapping and stuff and once you take control she's got like arm shit on her and uh like holsters and all kinds of shit really huh maybe I mean, no, no, maybe you're right, but, like, maybe I, I I didn't notice it. But there's no, like, chest plate or anything. Of course not. You're going to have them titties out. <laughs> For people who want that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a Scooby-Doo laugh lately. <laughs> Ew. I did one the other day, and it was, like, super Scooby-Doo-y. I did one that was full on the fucking Scooby-Doo one. I was like playing Call of Duty and I was like, and I got a kill and I was like, ee! and you got that nasty ass clown laugh. <laughs> Do I really? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude, Kaylee hates it too. Uh-uh. Oh man, you know what was fucking funny? Uh, this guy at work today was going, uh, he was making fun of this guy who called in and was pissed off and he was like, Man, you guys should open your stores because I fucking hate China. And I was like, yeah? And he goes, man, this is fucking bullshit. You need to open your store or close your store because this in-between shit is bullshit. And I was like, hey, man, we're just trying to stay afloat. I'm really sorry. And then he was like, I fucking hate China. I'm never going to buy another goddamn thing that says China again. This is their fault. You know that? And I was like, well, you can't really blame like a whole country because, you know, you guys, they had the virus or whatever. Oh, no, I can't, bitch. Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> oh, motherfucking China. Well, fuck all this. And he like hung up, right? And then. Well, you um, better go through everything at your house because I'm sure oh, 95% of it is yeah. made in China Everything's or China. Or China. Well, start taking components out of your fucking laptop and, yeah. you know, dismantle your fucking PS4 because, you know, you know, all that shit's in there yeah. too. If you're going to really be an apps, uh, what is it, like an ultimatumist, you better fucking. It might be made in the U.S., but those parts sure aren't from fucking U.S. <laughs> oh, I know, right? It's assembled in the <laughs> yeah. U.S. So, uh,. One of my employees was like, uh, he goes, you know that guy, what if he fucking goes into like a, a Chinese buffet and he's like, or like a Chinese restaurant and he's like, you fucking Asians, you gave us the virus. And then they're going to go, what you want? What you want to eat? Get out of here. And then he, he was like, he's like, you fucking, you all did this. It's your fault. And they're like. We had line. You get out. You get out. You get out. Or you eat. What you want to eat? And he's like, ah, I guess I'll have some compound chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and then he eats. Or it's, oh, it's got to be orange chicken because that's like orange the most chicken. white. Oh yeah, yeah. Asian food you can get. Yeah, for real. Or remember? Do you remember sweet and sour chicken? Uh huh. That was what I used to eat. They don't have that anywhere. Yeah, well, I don't eat more anymore. Orange anyways, chicken but. in a way. 
<clears throat> but it it's it was like soft breaded and it was basically like the fucking Asian version of chicken nuggets. Mm-hmm. And they were awesome. <laughs> 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 fucker. Uh, Demon Souls is life. We'll get a next update <clears throat> next week. Yeah, you'll get another update next week when I beat the game again. I film most of the memory on my laptop is because I have filmed me playing Demon Souls start to finish just so I can make a video out of it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it's just for like a few second clips just to show like really important things. I really need to like finish that video. It's like. I edited the Boletarian Palace, and there was so much I wanted to show that I had like forty-five minutes of content. I was like, "Fuck, uh, I can't, I can't keep everything. I had to be so uh-huh. picky." So I got to make like all these videos where I edit it all down to like just a few things, and then I got to edit everything down to be just one like thirty-minute video of just like a long explanation uh-huh. and or less. But like I can't. Ooh, I don't. It's gonna be like. It's going to be tough to do yeah, it less than 30 say. minutes because there's so much important shit in that game. That, Like, I was playing today, and I was like... Or I was playing yesterday, and when I got hit by the flame, the guy who throws a flame... Uh, <clears throat> like, that flame bomb at you while you're running up the steps, that is, like, the first time you, like, are introduced to the fire, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, that's so important. Oh, yeah, that guy right there, by the, right, pretty much right before the boulder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah there's a i really want to do a video about toy story like really bad the new one looks so fucking good though like have you not seen four toy story four no i'm saying like yeah i've seen it oh, that's okay. what i'm I saying like, say, like I, it I looked have it. fucking good like, yeah yeah it looked good like that rain it, was the, so real the story was like fucking uh-huh. great oh my god toy story four was like all about like the acceptance of death uh-huh. it was so amazing I started crying, dude. Oh, I did too. I fucking cried <laughs> when like Woody was up on that thing and he's like in the split decision. Uh-huh. Oh, fuck, and He stays dude. up Bo Peep. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like I cried so oh, hard. Yeah. I and cried I like <laughs> too. Dude, I need I need I want to make a video really badly about Toy Story 4 and Toy Story 1. Mm-hmm. Cuz Toy Story 4 like if you don't pick up on that, you're just blind, but that that story is like so amazingly about the acceptance of death. Uh-huh. And like Buzz's like internal struggle with like listening to his inner voice and stuff mm-hmm. was so fucking genius, and I want to watch it again. But like, even my wife doesn't want to watch it because she's like, "This is it's just too sad." And they like, all are fucking they're sad. All sad. I the think first I one's the more of, comedic. Yeah, but they're all sad. I got crying at the end of three. Three like, is brutal. <laughs> three was. Did really you know sad. that people posted three on like online, but they cut the scene before the f- they get burned in the furnace so they don't get burned in the furnace they get yeah. like, picked up by a claw and like the rest of the movie continues there's a there's a bunch of versions online when you torrent the movie mm-hmm. they cut it when they get to the furnace and roll credits and play like <laughs> sad music and a lot of people believe that's how the movie ends that's why people don't like that movie and they're like what why is there a fourth one because they thought they got fucking annihilated by the flames <laughs> And so there's a torrented version online that's heavily torrented, mm-hmm. and that's the ending. It's like fucking hilarious. That's not how it ends. I would kind of like to see that just to like get the yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just. I mean, yeah, you're not gonna know, but right. I mean, I mean you you'll are know now. Know, you already but, know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's funny that it just cuts and it's just credits. There's no like Andy giving the toys away to the little girl and all mm-hmm. that, and the the bear getting tied to the truck and all that. <laughs> nope just cut and they're all fucking dead but i want to make <clears throat> i really want to make a toy story one video um as like a video essay because that movie has like there's so much like super deep shit in that movie that like it's just so easily overlooked i haven't seen it in forever really ever forever, forever, probably forever. twice a, twice a year maybe uh-huh. maybe even more than that because i really like that movie yeah i haven't seen it probably at least 10 years really we yeah. should watch it fuck yeah. oh, we oh yeah we gotta watch mr nobody too. Oh, i should have brought that fuck it's uh but it's super good man it's like so my theory on it is that it's toy story one is a movie about enlightenment uh-huh. and that how toy story portrays what are you doing sitting, oh, up? sitting up the, the how the movie portrays it <laughs> 
Jesus, relax. Ah! So, the movie portrays enlightenment in this way, right? So, uh-huh. so Woody is clearly the enlightened, right? So, mm-hmm. so Woody, <clears throat> Woody goes in to, like, he's running the show. Clearly, the first scene is Woody mm-hmm. opening up to, and I can't wait till we watch this after I explain this shit because holy shit. So Woody Woody opens up the scene and he's like managing all the toys, right? The toys are acting out and shit and he's like keeping everyone together, right? He's kind of like a messiah for all of the <clears throat> all of the other toys, right? Uh-huh. And he runs the show, right? He's the enlightened. Uh-huh. So the the other toys follow his orders and whatever. And then so the buzz is thrown in, right? Buzz is the unenlightened. Uh-huh. Buzz is the fool. And when buzz comes in he thinks that he's in this world like it's like a matrix to him yeah where he comes in and he's like yo i'm fucking from star command i'm a space ranger everything i think is like real and you guys are all just aliens uh-huh. and he was like and what he says it immediately he's like hey dude this is andy's room i'm andy's favorite toy we're all toys like blah blah, blah. you're made of plastic and he's like uh huh, and he ignores him because yeah. <clears throat> there's a theory, there's a some law of one shit where you cannot enlighten someone like in the moment. You can't mm-hmm. enlightenment is not for someone else; it is for yourself, mm-hmm. uh, as Ross says. So you you cannot make make use of quick enlightenment. Mm-hmm. Woody can't just go like, hey. You're a toy because it's the same thing as going on the news and saying like aliens exist because at first you're going to go, no, they don't. And then look at like any bit of evidence through the history where like you say something profoundly against the grain Uh and then you're just told to believe it and you don't. You really got to believe it for yourself because if you walked up to somebody and said like, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you're going to be like, who? And then like, you know, that person has to discover that thing for themselves Themselves, and especially an external or existential thing Mm -hmm. they have to understand it for themselves right so um that's where all this stems from right so 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 woody goes to buzz says all that shit buzz is like nah uh i'm a fucking space ranger he's like you can't fly these wings are plastic and Mm -hmm. then he goes um nah i'm a fucking space ranger i'll show you i can fly and then he ingrains so as a second part of that that theory of of being quick enlightened Mm -hmm. the first step is to dig your nails in to your own beliefs so buzz digs his nails in and Mm -hmm. as a stroke of luck he survives the the falling with style thing he does with his eyes closed so Mm -hmm. he does like all the flips and spins and all that and then he believes he reaffirms that he is a space ranger so uh woody was like uh whatever lost cause right the next instance is uh, Woody wants to talk to Buzz again. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hey, look, man, I'm fucking Andy's favorite toy. Back off. And Buzz is like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm fixing my my spaceship. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, pass me that bonding strip. And it's a piece of tape. Yeah. He's like, you fool. So he's talking to him. And he, Woody's like, ugh. And he presses the button on the side of Buzz's helmet, mm-hmm. and it clo- it opens up, and then he's for the first time he's exposed to air, and he's like, ooh, 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 and he's holding his neck, and he's like, ooh, and he falls to his knees, and Woody is just like, what an idiot, because he's the enlightened, yeah, and he's like, and Buzz gets up and he looks around, and he's like, you could have sucked the, you could have sucked the my eyeballs from their sockets. And he was like, you really believe you're a fucking space ranger? Like, you really do. You know that? He's like, and uh, he gets all mad at him. But that's an, another example. Quick enlightenment cannot be achieved. Mm-hmm. So Woody presses like that thing, quick enlightenment. He dug his nails again and again. And he goes back to working on the fucking uh, the spaceship, right? Mm-hmm. The next time that this uh, really happens is that like uh there's a bunch of little series of events where buzz is pulled into the idea that like he's a space ranger right Mm -hmm. so 
he he goes to the gas station and there's the pizza truck yeah. and there's like the rocket on top uh-huh. he's like oh rocket and he gets in <clears throat> and like woody tricks him into going in the bus uh, into the truck because he knows that andy's going to pizza planet so he goes to pizza planet and then he sees the robots he's like oh my god fucking robots i'm definitely a space ranger <laughs> and then so more ingrained right uh-huh. and then woody's like oh, you idiot and then he they go in then they he's trying to get back to andy the whole time like woody is fully aware of his all his surroundings he's the fully enlightened mm-hmm. but then buzz is like oh a rocket and it's the fucking um it's the claw machine yeah he gets in and it's full of aliens he is completely like ingrained in his own environment uh-huh. now. he is fully realized that he is a space ranger meanwhile woody is completely aware that he's not yeah okay so flash forward buzz is starting to realize that things are not as they seem Mm -hmm. buzz uh is like scared of all these uh aliens that are surrounding him and he's like he is like writing writing the laser he's like i'll set it from stun to kill and then woody is like great you're gonna fucking blind them to death and then you know they get, get like pseudo attacked by the the toys Mm -hmm. and he aims his laser and nothing happens and he's like what's happening he's like use your karate chop action he starts chopping and buzz is like what the fuck dude i didn't know i could do that he's like because you're a fucking toy it's like another thing like hey man Mm -hmm. you're a toy you got karate chop action and uh and and woody only knew that because he read the box yeah and uh the laser beam doesn't work and so Buzz has like a little notion that he's not what he thinks he oh, is. Maybe, yeah. So then, flash forward a little, a little bit further. Buzz and Woody split up while they're getting chased by the dog, and Buzz goes into the bedroom and he closes and he like looks through the door and he hears on TV, and it was like Buzz Lightyear, or Star Command, we need you. And he turns around and he's on TV and he's like, oh, Star Command, and then he goes up and the whole commercial enlightens him mm-hmm. you're a toy and it's like oh sola al's toy barn the fucking buzz light year and it shows him like karate chop action and he like attacks <laughs> and he shoots a laser beam and it's like me 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 and uh-huh. he's like with wings and he presses the button it's like shing 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 and he flies and it's like not a flying toy and he's like just like woody already told him and uh-huh. he didn't watch the commercial he was aware and then, like, you know, there was no outside source yeah. telling Woody he was a toy. Woody yeah. had realized it over time, right? Yeah. But <clears throat> the, another thing is you had to ask, how did Woody know that he was a toy? Well, Woody probably didn't know right off the bat. He went through experience. Yeah. But through experience, it's just, like, similar to how your parents try to teach you something. And as a kid, you want to rebel against it, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So fast forward a little bit more. Buzz is, like watching that commercial and he's like what the fuck existential crisis right mm-hmm. and that song plays and it's like da, 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 da. and then he like he looks out and he's like oh i'm just some fucking toy aren't i and then he looks out at the window and he's like i can fly and he fucking climbs those little the, the metal things and stands up oh, and, and he comes. hits the wings mm-hmm. and his wings open up and then he's like i'm gonna fucking do it and the music's all dramatic <clears throat> and he jumps and there's this beautiful fucking beautiful moment where buzz is jumping out and the wings tilt just a little to the left and that right there is so fucking poetic because <laughs> it tells you something about doubt and realism mm-hmm. and so he jumps because he believes in himself but faith does not get you to fly yeah and so just like one has to build their wings on the way down uh, through like experience or whatever, Buzz falls, crashes, and breaks his arm, and his arm falls out, right? <laughs> and he's like, and there's this beautiful, beautiful shot, so underrated, where Buzz is caught like in the shot, and it zooms out, and he looks over at his arm, and he just like closes his eyes in defeat. And he, that moment, that moment, he realizes he's a toy uh-huh. because enlightenment is for the self of the self. Yeah. And that is 
fucking so genius and that is like so fucking amazingly poetic and the movie is it's just like the lego movie where like the the lego movie is way more obvious about it Uh but i think toy story is so subtle about like what they're trying to say at least in the first one because the first one's like a fun movie about murder and like becoming like you know friends and stuff mm-hmm. but there's like that enlightenment shit that is so In fucking amazingly that's profound yeah that's not for the kids yeah i didn't see that shit until i was like 20 i was like 25 no i'm 25 i'm 25 so i was like 24 <laughs> so I, and I sat down and i told jenna about this my sister-in-law and i was like what do you like this is the shit i'm talking about and so like i went off a bit and i was like so I, I, I had started to see that like in the beginning half of uh-huh. the movie and then I hit play again and I'm like sitting there and then now Jenna's really watching the movie. She's like sitting forward like watching the movie uh-huh. and I was like um, and I paused it and I was like this is the moment and I started going off just like I did now. I yeah. Like I was like Buzz like is realizing that like things aren't all as they seem right and then like I kept going and then we get to the part where he falls and I explain all that shit and she was like what the fuck i know she didn't say fuck she doesn't cuss but she was like what the heck i frick (laughs) she's like i've never saw this movie like this and i was like i didn't even think of this movie like this until just now Uh and like it it, there's something so amazing about that where like you can sneak this really interesting yeah like concept into a movie and it's so subtle man like, just the scene of Buzz, like, laying there, looking over at his arm is, like, fucking so profound to me. I love that. I've been wanting to paint that scene for, like, so bad. Like, for so long. That'd be pretty cool if you did that. Yeah. It's kind of like a random painting. I don't know mm-hmm. where I would put it, but, like, I just love that look of just... I wanted to paint <sighs> him in front of the TV mm-hmm. the most. Where he's, like... That's the moment where he's, like, oh, shit. Ultra realization, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the external realization. He's, like, I... I might be a fucking toy, like everyone's been telling me. It's like, yeah, I think to me it's the same thing as like seeing the whole sky full of UFOs, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, oh my shit, God. those crazy guys were right, <laughs> and like, <laughs> and you yeah, see people getting abducted left and right. Oh my fucking god, worst nightmare. Yeah, that's some shit, dude. That is a, uh, that's some stuff I've been thinking about. That that is a interesting thought. So that's for sure. Yeah, I really, really just want to have like a breakdown video of that. I mean, realistically, I could probably just cut whatever I just said and put it in a video, <laughs> and then just like lay it over. I just don't know how like copyright works with like using Especially with, like Disney. Disney. I know or Pixar. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I think discussing stuff. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> my God, discussing stuff on a uh, is probably okay. I don't know if you were a girl. Do you think you'd be nasty? Yeah, bitch. You think you'd be like super nasty, huh? I think I would be. I think I'd be kind of slutty. I mean, don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't. There's this one time I played a, I played this concert. <clears throat> I played. <laughs> I played this concert, uh, back when we were in Awake at Midnight, and. Me, not me and Drew. When I was in a band, I used to play in a band called The Wicked Midnight. I was a guitarist, and or one of the guitarists, rather. And I played this show. I don't think I've ever told you this. I, I, I played this show in, a, in I think it was in Burleson or Rendon. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and it was at this big warehouse. This girl was having a birthday party, and she wanted all the local bands to play as guests at the party. And that's how the music would be. We wouldn't mm-hmm. have like any like over-the-intercom music and uh so we were like the second band on i think and so we had this new singer atreyu not the band Mm -hmm. that's what he went by but his actual name was like something lame it was like a uh, it was like a girl's name i don't remember what it was jessica weaver it was like jessica no it wasn't (laughs) that girly but it was something like sue or something like that you know and uh so he was our new vocalist right like our singer we had a screamer too john so we played this we played this show 
and this girl, <clears throat> this fuck, this girl, like, you know, had our show there, and I was single, and like a bunch of people were single, so we were all trying to like hit on the girls, right? Uh-huh. And so, uh, you know, we're like, oh yeah, yeah, man, we're in the fucking band, bro, and we're like gonna play our set, right? So, we we play our set. Our set goes really well. Um, Atreyu had a fucking he had a he had mic volume on the mic, mm-hmm. so he turned it all the way down so no one could hear him sing. Cause he wasn't a good singer. We just needed him for like that one show. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so he like didn't play anything out loud, right? <clears throat> he turned his volume down, and then like the the that was really frustrating, right? So we we play the we play the show. The show goes well. It ends, and then we're watching other bands play, and we take. There's this kid that we've been talking to the whole time and like vibing with, mm-hmm. and he was like having fun and stuff, and so me. And the rest of my bandmates, this other band is up playing music, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we tried crowd surfing him. So he kind of got on the stage and he jumped under our arms. And then we're like like moving <laughs> him up and down in our arms. There's like six people holding this guy up in the air, right? And these girls were holding him and stuff. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what compelled any of us to do this. But we all took him, like we all like bent our arms to pull him in and then we tossed him in the air and i guess we thought we were gonna catch him nobody caught this guy and this guy freaking fell so hard on his wrist and fucking broke his wrist at that party oh my god and all of a sudden like he was like ah fuck i don't know the band's still playing and we're all like the band is laughing we're all laughing and we're like oh shit oh dude oh, we're so sorry bro and he's like oh my fucking wrist and then he cries and we're like oh shit and then all of the girls of the party all of them surround him and we're like touching him and like holding on to him giving him hugs and all of a sudden that kid was fucking fine and that kid's like oh yeah my wrist oh yeah it hurts so bad i don't think he actually broke it but it hurt Mm -hmm. his wrist pretty bad and he was like oh yeah oh oh yeah and then he had like six girls all all over his shit for the rest of the night right (laughs) and then all the guys were like fuck oh i hurt my wrist too (laughs) (laughs) so the reason why i brought up a tray you is because i had like my ipod and it was a purple like the nano yeah when it was like it could rotate and it had like all the sweet like colored games on it and you could watch music videos and stuff too. yeah it was like the skinny one yeah the skinny one it yeah. was like uh, sleek uh-huh <clears throat> i had my name engraved into it too uh, my dad ordered it from like apple or something like yeah. that uh for my birthday <clears throat> like that summer because i think someone stole my old one <laughs> so speaking of stealing a tray you we had like our files for the for the music on the iPod. Mm-hmm. So you had to hit it at like certain cues and it would play that part of the song and, or it play the intro or whatever. So we, um, we went to go gather our stuff and my iPod's missing. And I, I, I know where I put it. Mm-hmm. Like I put it in like the most obscure place and it was like, and only like the band knew about where it would be. Mm-hmm. And it was inside my amp like <clears throat> in the amp there's like a lip on the inside yeah. and so i put it in the lip and uh and then we did like the rest of the party we had cake and shit and uh like i go to pick up my shit and i was like hey y'all and i'm talking to my bandmates i'm like have y'all seen my fucking ipod and they're like no dude and i was like he's like check your pockets and i was like no obviously i don't have it i was like i put it in the i put it in the amp lip mm-hmm. and then i like confronted a tr- I confronted, confronted everybody about it I talked to Courtney the girl who like was doing the party I talked to uh, and then Courtney starts looking around for it and then I talked to uh, you know John and you know uh, Josh and I'm like yo where the fuck is this and then I talked to Atreyu about it and I was like hey fuck is my iPod I remember you talked about it when we were at my house earlier that you thought it was cool and shit and you thought it was like you liked all the music on it and you liked the color because it was like a nice like yeah another purple. like it was like a purple color uh-huh. yeah and i was like do you fucking have my ipod and he was like no dude and i was like show me your fucking pockets and he was like no 
I'm not showing you my pockets. Why can't you just take my word for it? I was like, only a motherfucker who wouldn't show me my pockets got some shit in his pockets. And he was like, I ain't showing you shit. And then uh, he stormed outside, right? And then I was like, I was like, I followed him, right? And then there's a band on. Mm -hmm. uh, They were the band uh, that was went to our same high school. I forgot what they were called. Uh, They had some like asking Alexandria sounding name, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And they were up on stage. Everybody in the crowd, there was Mm -hmm. like thirty something people. Everybody went outside to watch me and this guy fucking throw down. (laughs) So I'm outside and there's a circle around us and like our guitarist Brandon was there and he was like, fucking fight him, bro. (laughs) Fucking fight him. I know he got your fucking iPod. And then like fucking John is like, fight him, bro. Fuck that guy. And everyone's like yelling at us. And I was like, I know you got my fucking iPod, bro. I was like, I listen to it every single day. It'd be one thing if you asked. It's one thing if you bought it for me. It's another thing if you steal something I use every fucking day. I was like, bro, I never fucking trusted you. You're doing shady shit at my house all last night. Because he was like putting shit. Like I found shit in his bag from my house and shit. And I was like taking it out. And I was like, dude, just fucking show me your iPod. I'm not about to fight you if you can just tell me the truth. And then like I'm about to, I'm literally about to go to blows with this guy and mm-hmm. everyone's like beat like you know boosting us up right. And then he's like, oh, hey, well, let's just go look back where it was. I'll go look back where it was. He took off, came back, no shit. Thirty seconds later, and it was like he's like, it's right here, dude. It's fucking right here. And I was like, where was it? And he was like, it was in the amp, dude. And I was like. No, it fucking wasn't. And then, like, everybody, like, everyone in the band had looked there. Every uh-huh. single person in the band had looked in the amp. Like, uh-huh. given it a second run. And I was like, oh, so when you fucking look for it, you find the iPod. And he was like, uh, yeah, man. God, just relax. And we had Ryan there. And Ryan was about to fucking run his ass over with a car. <laughs> <laughs> like, God, we were so fuck fucking up, Ryan. serious over an iPod. <laughs> That was the last time we had a Trey you play at our show ever. And he was Probably. like, we were trying to discuss. I remember where, before the show, we were trying to discuss whether or not we keep Awake at Midnight as a name. Uh-huh. And, or we change it. And he was trying to steal other people's names. Where it was like, uh, there was a band called To The Gallows. And so he was trying to get us to change the name to To The Gallows. He was like, oh, they're not a band anymore anyways. So like, we should just steal their name. That's a good name. I was like, yeah, but like, I made Awake at Midnight the name and no one has that name so like why don't we just keep awake at midnight and then after he left we like kept awake at midnight for Uh like another like three years Uh (sighs) that was fucking funny what if you like it's like i see my ipod right there in your pants and you gotta grab it and it's his dick and And then i and then i have to jerk him off in front of like 35 people he's like yeah you just grab my dick bro he's like guess you gotta finish it and he's like yeah, I have your iPod. Just got to finish me off. Then I'll give you your iPod. <laughs> then I'm fucking dumb enough to go through with the whole thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's get on stage, actually. Come on. Yeah. We More do light it. up there. <laughs> yeah. Then I do it on stage. And the band is playing while I jerk this dude off. I got you your iPod back. Fuck it. That is how I got my iPod back, surprisingly. I mean, he didn't just hand it to me. He said I had to do all that first. Mm-hmm. I just left that part out of the story. Oh, it it's was pretty disgusting that you knew the truth. Circle, so circle jerk. Oh, literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah, instead of circle pit, it was circle jerk. <laughs> Start a circle jerk. <laughs> That's fucked up. You really had to take it there. Yeah, I did. It's fucked up. Oh no, I am fucked up. <laughs> if if you had fifty cents in your account, you could do nothing. You could do nothing. You can do nothing with like a dollar. Literally, not a dollar, because everything that's 99 cents is over a dollar. Yeah, a so. dollar oh eight. Yeah. You'd be fucked. Yeah, there's a zilch you could fucking do with that. Which is crazy, because when... Do you see when Cokes were like 30 cents when we when our parents were like really young? Do you see those ads where it's like 30 cent Coke? I'm like, they charge you two fucking dollars. It's probably like a penny a gallon. Bread used to be like 25 cents, and now it's like four dollars. Yeah, but <laughs> bread is... Oh, I bet bread was healthier back then, too, actually. Maybe. Yeah. Not all the corn syrup and shit in it. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Corn syrup, I don't think, was developed until, like, the 60s. Or, like, high fructose corn syrup, rather, was mm-hmm. developed until, like, the 60s. 
But I don't think they started putting it into food and stuff because like, GMOs weren't even big until um, the first Bush. Like, yeah, until so it's like, Bush oh, it can be way senior. cheaper like this to mass produce yeah. shit and people mm-hmm. will still eat it. I think it is George Bush Sr. who was probably, I mean, little... who was the first to like approve all the GMO stuff. I'm not 100% sure. Probably that little cuck. That little cuck? <laughs> He's dead, bro. Has some Good. respect. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> The world's a better place without him. I, I don't. I'm not gonna speak too heavily on whether or not I think that guy's corrupt, but you know, just about everyone was. So there's not a. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there's a good president. There might be a very small handful of presidents who didn't do something that was like overtly selfish. Because even though John F. Kennedy like blatantly stood out against secret societies and like was like a man of the people, he still did some shady shit for like through his like with his family Uh you know where he was like fucking around it wasn't like a very good person to his family he was still i guess good for the country and um yeah i don't know i think things are more covert now than before Uh so it's hard to say like if obama or fucking trumpsky trump is really outspoken though so, like, I think if he's doing some fucked up shit, he's just going to tweet it. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I just think I'm going to bomb this place. Fuck it. And just does. Who knows? He's like, I fucking, my vacuum broke today. I'm going to take it out on somebody. <laughs> Stupid fucking. So fucking China. Going to bomb Russia. YOLO. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> we'll never know. I just love like <laughs> the long pause where we look into each other's <laughs> eyes. There's a there's a show on Netflix where these people look into each other's eyes for it is not the whole show obviously, but it it's a part they do. Uh, it's uh too hot to handle. So the show's called. There's oh, a God. part where they look into each other's eyes mm-hmm. and they just like are supposed to s- sit in silence and just look into each other's eyes. And this one guy just starts fucking crying. And that girl's like, "Are you crying right now?" He's like, "Yeah, like I just feel like I saw something like just so like fucking special about you. And like, he's like, I I just feel like I gained perspective and stuff. Uh, Most of those people gained some spiritual perspective. Uh And then like three or four of them were like, fuck it. I just need some pussy like real bad. Yeah. And you know what that show's about? Where it's like a bunch of, quote unquote hot people yeah they can't like fuck or mess around or right anything. right yeah. or they get charged yeah yeah uh there's this one like ho ass chick who's like in this show and she's easily like the sluttiest chick in the entire show and she is like deluded into thinking like her sexual infatuation with this guy is like some form of love and then she just like blows it for everybody they blow 30 i think 38 grand just because they like can't keep their shit together they almost fuck it up for everybody and everyone's like really upset about it it's bad <laughs> it's bad just them not including all the other people who blew money uh-huh. and kisses and shit they blew like fucking 38 grand just because they, they had to fuck like they had to do it and they're like oh sorry we fucked oh whoops and this one couple did everything but oh, and right. took like a ton of the money they're like, oh, shit. it was like 16K or something. And they're uh-huh. like, fuck, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, they li- the the lady, like the the AI who like observes everything uh-huh. lists all the shit they did and it bleeped it out. And it was a lot. And everyone, my wife was like, Jesus, what is everything but? And I was like, dude, they probably ate each other's assholes and everything. Uh-huh, she listed too so much shit i was like i don't even know if i do that much shit like while i'm having sex it wasn't like oh blow job hand job making out and sex she went and said like eight or nine things and i was like what all did you do is there a fucking digital number for eating each other's asshole because that's like rim job yeah it's like rim job you initiated the rim job eight thousand dollars like, why was that more than head what and it was like because it's dirtier <laughs> like 
And the AI is so obviously just a lady on the other side with like a digital voice. She's and just not like actually an flicking AI. her being on the other side watching these people. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> good thing I have night vision. <laughs> there is one where I see there's a fucking scene Keep where a going. girl is like in bed and she's like talking to this guy and they're like hooking up and she's like, I gotta do it. And he's like, do what? And then she just, the camera shows it in like, <laughs> they show it on the fucking it's all night vision and uh-huh. this girl fucking goes down on him and he's like oh fuck dude and he's like holding her head and it's going up and down and just she gives him head he didn't give anything in return oh she just God. had to suck his dick she had to and then you know he looks at her and he's like i fucking love you <laughs> <laughs> and the next day they're like someone has broken the rules and she's like Oh shit, dude! And he's like, "Oh man," it's like so and so gave so and so a blowjob, and then everyone's like, "Oh!" And he's like, "Yeah, boy." <laughs> he's like, "Sorry, y'all, that shit felt good." <laughs> well, five thousand worth, dude. It was like five grand, and they're like, "Whoopsies." Yeah, so she just had to suck his dick. That shit was so funny. Just seeing her on camera, like talk to him and she's like yeah yeah with the head bob and she's like i gotta do it he's like what and she just goes down on him <gasps> oh, yeah yeah can you imagine she's still wearing the microphone and it's like <laughs> he's like oh keep going i'm almost there <laughs> <laughs> hopefully they didn't hear any of that oh my god thank you he's like well please wipe it all over your glasses and then it just cuts it just cuts to the next morning <laughs> and the viewers are like whoa what the fuck did she just say what, what? <laughs> oh my god all right goodbye i love you guys bye love you <laughs>